Carrie's away this week, so mm -hmm. um, so we wanted to have her as a part of the show. So the unique way that we were able to do that is this week we uh, we actually went on site at St. John Ambulance in Barrie, mm -hmm. and we met with a lady named Mia who sat down and actually showed us how to use defibrillator technology, which is uh, mm -hmm. basically like you know those sh shock boxes that uh, allow you to uh, defibrillate a heart and uh, live, <laughs> basically save a life using mm -hmm. an amazing easy to use technology like I've always been intimidated by this technology if if I was at the pool or something and and I saw somebody go down I don't know that I would be brave enough to grab that thing off the wall I'd and be that, afraid I would kill them <laughs> well I'd be I, I just didn't it, it's like one of those it's one of those things that if you if you don't know if you've never seen it used if you're not sure how it works it's intimidating mm -hmm. it's such a piece of technology that well you know could I hurt somebody or should I just leave it to somebody who knows or so it's nice to actually have an idea of, uh, of how that works. So we're here today at St. John Ambulance with Mia. Mia is an, the AED coordinator for St. John Ambulance. And she's here to talk to us a little bit about how technology is saving lives every day. Um, your heart works by electrical impulses. So there are specialized cells in your heart that trigger the pumping activity by sending these electrical impulses. And most people go by day to day never giving any thought to this until it stops working and then it becomes really important to them. So Mia is going to help us understand how to get the heart pumping again using technology. Here's Mia. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to look for a defibrillator, an AED. Uh, they'll be on the wall at an arena, at schools, at the shopping mall, wherever it is, you, wherever somebody goes down. So as soon as the person hits the floor, um, and you realize that they are in fact unconscious and we touch them, are you okay, you're unconscious, then we want to send for 911 immediately. And what we also need is we need the AED to come as quickly as possible, the defibrillator to come as quickly as possible. For every minute that they are on the floor and they are not being shocked by the defibrillator, they are losing 10% chance of survival. So if the ambulance doesn't come for 8, 9, 10 minutes, that's... That's 80 or 90 percent. Right, right. So it's really important that you get the machine there as quickly as possible. You do not need to be trained to get the machine off the wall and get started. The key to using a defibrillator is follow the prompts. Do what the machine tells you to do. So as long as you know uh, at least a little bit of CPR, we can't harm the casualty with the defibrillator. We can't kill him. He's dead if we're using the CPR, doing CPR. Okay, so there's nothing we can do to harm him. The only thing that we can do is harm the people who are near him if somebody is touching him while I shock them. So as long as I'm not touching, we're good to go. Okay, so obviously the AED is going to deliver a shock. Can you just explain how this system works and what, why we're going to use it? Okay, so what the machine does is the machine does not detect whether he has a pulse or he does not have a pulse. What the machine is going to do is it's going to, um, once you put the pads on, it's going to read the casualty. If the heart is not beating, it still has electrical activity that you were talking about a little bit earlier. So the machine is not, or the heart is not beating, it has some electrical activity. The machine is then um, uh, programmed to recognize the electrical activity. So it's not beating, there's no pulse, but it is quivering. So what the machine does is it then shocks with uh, probably about 360 joules through the casualty. It shocks the heart into stopping the quivering to actually allow the heart to kick in on its own using its own pacemaker. So in fact, most people believe that the AED starts the heart, but in fact, the AED doesn't start the heart. It stops the misfire of the heart to allow the heart to kick in on its own. So when we arrive at the scene, uh, we're at the arena and the person drops in front of us. Uh, the first thing we want to do is make sure the area is safe for yourself. You don't want to go into anything that's going to be dangerous to yourself. So as long as I'm safe, then I'm going to come in and I'm going to check the casualty and see if he's conscious. Check him for consciousness first. So I'm just going to tap him. Hey, are you okay? Hey, can I help you? And there's no answer. So I'm immediately going to send somebody for 911 and to bring me back an AED if there's one available. So while somebody is bringing me the defibrillator, I'm checking breathing, I'm doing my two breaths, and I'm starting my CPR until the machine arrives. The machine trumps the person. So as soon as the machine arrives, I stop what I'm doing, I turn on my machine, and I follow the prompts. So first thing I want to check on my casualties, I want to do the ABCs. A, airway. Airway needs to be open and clear. So I do a head tilt, chin lift. So I'm going to tilt the head back, get the tongue off the back of the throat. Then I'm going to B, check for breathing. So I'm going to get down nice and close, check for breathing for 10 seconds. One, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. If he's not breathing, I'm going to give him two breaths. Plug the nose, breathe. Just enough air to make the chest rise. And a second breath. And then I would start C go right into CPR, chest compressions, 30 chest compressions, one and a half to two inches in depth. And I continue to do 30 compressions and two breaths until the AED arrives. As soon as the AED arrives, I stop what I'm doing, turn on the machine, and I go from there. Assuming that we've done a little bit of CPR, then we're going to turn the machine on. Begin by removing all clothing from the patient's chest. Cut clothing. All machines needed. come with a little bag, and then you dump out your little bag, and it has everything that you need. So you might need to have some scissors to cut the clothes. When the patient's chest is bare, remove protective cover and Got take some gloves. white adhesive pads. And a mask to protect myself. Right. <laughs> um, I would then uh, dry the casualty. If the casualty is, is um, very With hairy, I need to shave him first and, and then dry. Protective cover and take out white adhesive pads. So I follow the prompts, remove the cover, take out the pads. Place pad exactly as shown in the picture. Press firmly to patient's the bare skin. The pad has a picture. It shows me exactly where I need to put it, so I follow what the picture when tells the first me. pad is in place, look carefully at the picture on the second pad. Peel the second pad from the yellow plastic liner. Place pad exactly as shown in the picture. Press Again, firmly there's a to picture. patient's bare skin. No one should touch the patient. So we need to move back. Analyze I'm clear. It. We all need to be clear. Ideally, we'd like to be a good 12 inches away. So we're no all clear. Okay. To Don't touch the patient. Stand clear. Analyzing. Shock advised. Stay clear. Okay. So we're going to get ready to shock. I'm going to push the button, but before I push it, I must confirm no one's near. Shock Don't touch denied. him. I'm going to shock. Shocking now. Shock delivered. Shock delivery. Be sure emergency medical services have been called. We called already, so we're good. To touch the patient. Begin CPR. For help with CPR, press the flashing blue button. So I'll push the flashing blue button because I might be confused. In the center of the chest, between the nipples. Place your other hand on top of the first. Push the chest down firmly two inches. Keep time with the beat. Elbow straight, heel of the hand down in the center of the chest, pushing down about one and a half to two inches for an adult casualty. Each nose, tilt head, and give two full breaths. Breathe. Breathe. Continue with compression. So we follow the prompts. Do what the machine tells us. Again, this is an adult casualty, anybody over eight years of age. But I can also do it on a child from age one to eight. We can't hurt the casualty because he's already dead. So anything we can do is better than what he is. Just do what it says until whoever is trained nose, takes over for you. And give two full breaths. Breathe. So even if you don't know how to do CPR, this machine is going to tell you what to do very calmly because this can be a really stressful situation. So it just walks you through the process. Are all AEDs like this? Um, no, not exactly like this. They all push the button for shock, uh, but they don't all tell you what to stop do for CPR. the CPR. Oh, stop CPR. No one should touch the okay, patient. so let's move back. Are you clear? Stand clear. Don't touch the casualty. Clear. You can. Oh, shock advice. Stand clear. Get your finger ready. Before you push it, make sure no one's standing. I'm going to shock him. Don't touch him. Shocking now. Now, shock delivered. It is safe to touch the patient. Begin CPR. And then we just keep going. 